I'm Brian Williams, this is Heat TV, and with me today is John Walker, the Heat courtside announcer. John, what did you make of the game today? Very disappointing, very frustrating. I thought we were excellent the first three periods. Um, went into the last period leading 57-56. Uh, couldn't quite keep it going. The last period was um, notable, really, for uh, fouls that we had to commit to stop the clock. Uh, we committed something like 12 fouls in the last period. But um, to their credit, Sheffield converted 15 foul shots and the final difference is uh, 13 points, 12 points. Yeah. Um, so that really was, was um, the way the game sort of panned out in the end. I thought we were as good as them through the first three periods. Yeah. I noticed they cut, hit a couple of really big three-pointers. They had a 10-1 run on us and that, that gave them that nine-point lead with about four minutes to go. Yeah, they, they made four three-pointers coming down the stretch, one of which was... Steve D'Agostino from almost the halfway line. Oh, he had no um, right taking no. that shot, but it was it, an uh, amazing shot. Yeah, it, was, it was a sweet I mean, shot. Coach talked about that in interviews, and he said, "You know, he said we defended it as well as we could." And boof, you know, if he's going to make a shot like that, you've got to take your hat off to it. That's true. I think there was another key point for me. I, I think uh, young Teo Gadembi does some great stuff, but we were down by about six, and uh, he slashed inside and uh, tried to slam dunk, and it didn't come off. No. Um, and whereas we'd have been down by just a few. They got the ball, went to the other end and converted. So that was yeah. quite a big play in the game as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Teo's had some, some great moments in the heat and I'm, yeah. I know he'll go on to have a lot more this season. Yeah. But uh, that was Definitely. that was a, a bit of a frustrating play. Yeah, it reminded it's... me of Mike Obaseki yeah. some years ago in a game at, uh, at Bracknell. But, yeah. uh, I mean, it, as you say, Teo, he's young, he's still learning, you know, and, and there'll, be, there'll be some of those moments and there'll be some brilliant moments as well, you know. Absolutely. And, you know, but, we, of course, if that had come off, then the crowd would have gone wild yeah. and uh, you know, yeah. it, it would have been a different game. You know. And you've got to admire that mentality because he went, he went past his man and then he had Paul Williams who blocked a few shots between him and the basket and he just went straight forward. He's quite a good player, isn't he, Williams? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, quite, I, I was impressed. Big, big I, mean, but, uh, I thought tonight James Porter uh, had, a, had a really good game, came up with uh, 14 points, uh, six rebounds. I think one thing uh, that, that we struggled with in the, in the second half was rebounding. Yeah. Um, I've got some stats here that... Um, we, we didn't rebound anything like as well as they did in the second half. It's 44-46 in total in the game, but uh, in the second half, uh, the rebounds were 18-26. Uh, uh, they, yeah. they got six more rebounds. Yeah. I think that told in, in the way that the game uh, panned out. Yeah, well, it's noticeable. James, you know, I'm not cr- criticising uh, coach here, but I mean, James wasn't on the court that much. At the point, I think, where we'd be getting our rebound. I think it showed. You yeah, know, po- possibly. But I think uh, Creon's got um, an abundance of, of talent in terms of height this year, which yeah. we haven't had here at Guildford in the past. No. So, uh, you know, he's trying to rotate all the players and keep everybody happy. And um, you know, I think generally he does a good job of that. Yeah. Um, no, everybody yeah. gets a break and everybody gets on the court. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. And uh, as I say, I thought it was a lot of positive to take away from today's game. And I thought James, I thought James did what he was brought here to do. You know, he rebounded, he played some tough defence, he made himself felt in the paint, and he got the crucial baskets around the bat. So and he's an awkward customer yeah. to get by for, for yeah, opposing definitely. players. You know, he he um, puts his arms about and uh, makes it yeah. difficult for guys to get through or over him. Yeah. So Saturday. Yeah, what about Saturday? Leicester Riders, Rob Paternostro back, back in uh, town again? Yes, indeed. And uh, we've had some absolutely stupendous games. Uh, well, we, um, in, in my time with, with basketball, the teams that I've followed... Um, Quadruple overtime, uh, Brackle Pirates many years ago, and uh, Mike Hales. Um, those of you who uh, might remember Mike Hales getting thrown out of a game with Clyde Vaughan. We've had some great games over the yeah. years, um, and we need a big win. We need. A, yeah. We don't just need to win, but we need to yeah. win by yeah. quite a few points yeah. to take we, that into the. We've got to. Eight. We've got to take a big lead up to Leicester because they're a tough team to beat on their own court, and it's it's a tough court to play on. That's right. I mean, uh, I, I, I personally, I think I'd rather have the second leg at home so that you know what you've got to do yeah. and you've got the home yeah. support to, uh, to cheer you on. We need a lot, of, a lot of you fans out there in TV land yeah. and computer land need to come up and watch the, the heat play in that yeah. second leg. Uh, Saturday could be a, a really good game. Um, kids for free if they're uh, in yeah. Halloween dress and accompanied by a parent. Yeah, so... Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, we need a we need a big win, and yeah. I think if the guys can play the way they did the first three periods, what was frustrating was that we've actually put in some really good fourth period performances yeah. recently, and we've stopped teams scoring yeah. you know, single single figures, yeah. um, which is tremendous stuff. We we really need to to put that kind of a performance yeah. together for uh, twenty minutes yeah. in each half yeah. on Saturday. I mean, that was the first time we really got outworked, wasn't it, in the fourth quarter? 
Uh, yeah, but you know, uh, these, these guys from Sheffield, they've got six very useful players yeah. that, that came along uh, tonight. Um, and you know, they, they play in a different way to, to the Heat. We're, we're using ten players, uh, uh, nine players maybe, yeah. most games, and trying to give everybody plenty of court yeah. time. And Sheffield come along, they've got uh, five or six players there, that uh, all of whom got uh, lots of points and, and got rebounds. And yeah. you know, D'Agostino, 25 points and four rebounds. He's only about four foot three. I think. <laughs> and so that's, that's a great performance yeah. from him. Well, I think 88 of their 90 points were scored by their starters. So, you know, it tells you what sort of team it is. They're going, yeah. you know, those guys are going to play yeah. 35, 40 minutes each. Sure, sure. But uh, Saturday, um, yeah, let's hope that uh, the Heat can come out and, uh, and put in a, a, a really good 40-minute performance and uh, come away with a big win to take up to yeah. Leicester. Yeah. And for those of you who haven't seen Leicester Riders before, coach uh, Rob Paternostro is worth the admission money alone. I mean, just keep an eye on a visiting bench because it's, it's going to be fun. On his day, he's, uh, he's good entertainment indeed. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much, John, and uh, let's see what happens on Saturday. Absolutely. Okay.